Today we're going to be doing financial statements. We'll be focusing on the statement of financial position, um, i.e. your balance sheet. Um, and I will simply show you how to record each transaction as you go and making sure that you don't go back um, to the same transaction. Here we are simply given the information um, that was extracted from the financial records of King Traders Limited. The company is authorized to sell 250,000 ordinary shares. Now that information is very important um, because you can actually record that information and it will be recorded in um, it will be recorded in, in your ordinary share capital node as authorized shares. Okay, it will be recorded in your ordinary share capital node as authorized shares. Um, I'm going to quickly go to my ordinary share capital node um, and I will simply record that. And this is my ordinary share capital note. Now in my ordinary share capital note, I'll start with authorized shares and the number of authorized shares will be 250. Note that that 250 is not a rent value. It represents the maximum number of shares that a company may issue. It represents the maximum number of shares that a company may issue. It is not a rent value value okay now that is the first mark that you will get obviously um and then it says information um then they say pre-adjustment trial balance of king traders limited on the 28th of february 2015 meaning our financial year ends on the 28th of February, 2015. Um, that will result in our financial year starting on the 1st of March, 2014. So our current financial year started on the 1st of March, 2014, and it ran up to the 28th of Feb, 2015. Then they gave you ordinary share capital. They said it's 190,000 shares. Um, I just need to specify something when it comes to the pre adjustment trial balance. Um, every amount that is here will be um, closing value. It will be a balance at the end of the financial year, unless the adjustments tell you otherwise. Um, there are certain things that you need to pay attention to, like your retained income. Uh, you realize your retained income is 380,118. That could be an opening balance, especially if we have not yet um, um, prepared the income statement. Uh, because if we haven't prepared the income statement, it means that the profits for the current year have not yet been uh, transferred to retained income. That is why you will always be guided by your adjustments. Same with accumulated depreciation on vehicles and equipment. Those two will be an opening balance unless the adjustment tells you otherwise, okay? Uh, the adjustment might tell you that depreciation has already been recorded, making those two balances closing balances. Except for those two, um, everything here will simply be your closing balance unless told otherwise by the adjustments. Now, I will not record these ones for now because I'm going to start with whatever I have under my nominal section. And then I'll come back to this and I'll deal with each of this as I go through my adjustments. Now, here at the nominal account section, nominal account section, they gave me sales, they gave me cost of sales, debtors allowances. Um, and all of these, I am simply going to record them. Everything that is in my nominal account section will be recorded. Um, please note that um, 
your income will be on the credit side and all your expenses will be on the debit side. But sometimes you'll only be given one column. You still need to identify which ones, which accounts will be your income accounts and which accounts will be your expense accounts. Now, you already know that uh, before you start with anything, um, you will simply take your sales value and minus your debtor's allowances. You will simply take your sales value minus your debtor's allowances to get your net sales. So net sales will be sales minus debtors allowances. Now let us quickly record um, all our nominal account section. Obviously that will be recorded in our income statement. I will simply start with a statement of comprehensive income. I have sales value, my sales value, um, was 2,540,806 and I have cost of sales. Cost of sales will be 1,821,610. But from my sales value, I'm simply going to minus my debtors allowances. I've browsed through my adjustments and I realized that there is no adjustment that will impact on sales and cost of sales, okay? You will do this during your reading time where you, um, you will simply look at your adjustment to check if anything is there. Um, but however, before you even close the bracket, make sure by checking the adjustments to check if there is no transaction that will impact on sales or cost of sales. Now here I will simply have my net sales of 2,536,900. I will minus 1,821,610 to get my gross profit. My gross profit will be 715,290, okay? And then I will simply record all the other accounts, which is your rent, I'll keep it open, uh, profit on sale of assets, um, that will also keep it open for now, okay, simply going to the adjustments. Um, and then I will simply go to my, I will simply go to my expenses. Under my expenses, I will simply record all my expenses, which is a better stationary, director's fee, audit fees, interest income, um, interest expense, and then I don't have anything on transaction. So everything that was in my um, trial balance um, under nominal account section, I transferred it to the statement of comprehensive income. I just need you to pay attention to one item though, which is simply your dividends on ordinary shares, which will be 85,500. Note that if you have dividends on ordinary shares in the pre-adjustment trial balance, that relates to dividends that have been paid. And the only dividends that we can pay in the current year will be your interim dividends. Um, so I will take that straight to my retained income and I will simply record that as my interim dividend. So I will simply start with dividends on ordinary shares shares, interim dividends of 85,500. That's what I will start with. And now we'll simply go to the adjustments since I'm done with um, recording everything that was in my trial balance and that a nominal account section. The first adjustment says the following information relates to ordinary shares. And then they say on the 30th of June, 2014, okay? So remember our financial year starts on the 1st of March, 2014. So it's March, April, May, June. So after four months, we, the company, issued 50,000 shares at 4 and 25 cents per share. Obviously, we know that, that is supposed to go to our ordinary share capital. The um, point follows and actually uh, simply continues as follows. It says, this has been properly recorded in the books. I repeat, this has been properly recorded in the books. When they say it has been properly recorded, it simply means that when you go to your pre-adjustment trial balance um, and you look at your ordinary share capital, it says 190,000 shares in brackets, which are the number of shares that we have issued. The share capital that relates to those, those number of shares will be 807,500. It means that 190,000 thousand shares includes the new shares that we have issued. And that 807,500 also includes the share capital that we have 
received. Know that um, that transaction will be recorded as I've said in our ordinary share capital node. I will go straight to my ordinary share capital node. In my ordinary share capital node, I'll start with 50,000 shares. Remember I said 190 includes the 50,000 shares. 